Hi, my name is Lori Anderson with FreedomOutpost.com. I am addressing today the article posted in Girls Just Want to Have Guns. You can't evacuate with your guns. Florida sheriffs continue to oppose a bill to allow citizens to take their guns with them in a state of emergency. Posted April 28, 2014. According to the article, on Wednesday, April the 30th, 2014, SB 296 by Senator Jeff Brands will be heard on the Senate floor. The Senate needs to substitute the House bill, HB 209, and pass it without amendments. SB 296, mandatory evacuation, is the Senate version of HB 209 that has been under constant attack by the Florida Sheriff's Association and continues to be under attack in the Senate. The bill was under attack in Senate Community Affairs Committee and Senator Darren Soto, a Democrat from Kissimmee, succeeded in passing an amendment for the Florida Sheriff's Association to strip out essential language. SB 296 Firearms Mandatory Evacuations is a bill to allow law-abiding citizens to take their firearms with them when they are in the act of evacuating while complying with mandatory evacuation order under a declared state of an emergency. This bill will keep law-abiding citizens from being arrested and having their firearms confiscated for taking their firearms with them when they evacuate. While the Florida Sheriff's Association proclaim that they have a strong support for the Second Amendment, they actively oppose this legislation and your right to bear arms. I'm going to address that more in just a moment because it is extremely disturbing to me how the Florida Sheriff's Association portrayed itself in 2013. In 2013, the Florida Sheriff's Association listed a proclamation. This is their official proclamation. Support of the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. Whereas the Florida Constitution in Article 8, Section 1, created the Office of Sheriff and invested the sheriff with certain powers necessary to carry out his or her duties to serve and protect the public. And the sheriffs are charged with the public trust and are sworn to uphold the Constitution of the United States, which guarantees the right to bear arms. And whereas the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution assures the right of the people to keep and bear arms. And whereas the Florida sheriffs have continually supported the rights guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States, including the right to bear arms, and Florida sheriffs affirm that they will not assist, support, or condone any unconstitutional infringement of that right. Now, therefore, it be it proclaimed that on this 29th day of January 2013, at the Winter Conference of Destin, Florida, the Florida Sheriff's Association publicly acknowledges and reiterates its support for the rights provided by the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, signed by Sheriff Susan Benton and Steve Casey. Where this is ironic is, the bill that they are opposing is the same type of bill that would protect Florida citizens from another Katrina type disaster. During Hurricane Katrina, many law abiding citizens were disarmed, their weapons were stolen, and it was done illegally. Here on the Florida House of Representatives, it shows the SB 296 carrying a concealed weapon or a concealed firearm. General Assembly by Community Affairs and Military and Veterans Affairs, Space and Domestic Security and Criminal Justice and Brains. Carrying a concealed weapon or a concealed firearm, providing an exemption from criminal penalties for carrying a concealed weapon or a concealed firearm while in the act of complying with a mandatory evacuation order during a declared state of emergency. So what these sheriffs apparently are Standing against is a law-abiding citizen is being told, for instance, you have to leave your home, but you're not allowed to take your firearm, so you have to leave your firearm in your home. Or what do they want to do it? They want criminals to go in there and steal it and, and uh, take those guns 
and, and use them on the law-abiding citizens that have been disarmed by these police officers, which we saw also happen in Hurricane Katrina. It is of my opinion, if they support the law-abiding citizens being disarmed during a state of an emergency, when that is mandatory that they leave their homes, then all the officers who are also citizens should be disarmed themselves. Now, in all fairness, I am going to call the, the Florida Sheriff's Association and talk to them and see exactly where they really truly stand. See if this is an accurate report that they oppose the bill, why they oppose the bill, and then ask them why they are not supporting a bill that would protect citizens from the same type of atrocities and tragedies that happened during Hurricane Katrina. Stand by. All right, everybody, I just want to let you know that Florida is a two-party state. In case you do not know what a two-party state is, that means you have to have consent from, you have to know yourself that you're being recorded, as well as the other person on the other end of the line. Um, I use Digital Media Law Project to look up the individual different states will let you know whether you're in a one-party or a two-party state. You want to make sure, especially if you're an investigative journalist or independent journalist, to check these laws. You can check them at Digital Media Law Project and it's www.dmlp.org. It is a very, very handy source of information. You don't want to do anything that is illegal. So you want to make sure that you are in the confines of the law, uh, being law-abiding, and um, that you know whether the party uh, or the state, per se, is one party or two party. Now, if you are in a one party state, if you personally are located in a one party state, yet you are calling a two party state, you have to still go by the two party state rule. Thus would be the reason why when I called the Florida Sheriff's Association, that was not recorded. So only thing that the Florida Sheriff's Association did was they referenced me to Nanette and gave me her phone number. Now, the reason that I was able to record Nanette because it wasn't actually Nanette that was being recorded. I left a message on the answering machine. So the only one that is being recorded is me and the message that I left Nanette. So that is why I am going by the one party on the recording because Nanette is actually not on the other end of the line. It is only a recording device. So therefore, she is not being recorded at all. Now, back to the rest of the information that we're going to cover for the situation of them not supporting law-abiding gun owners in the time of a national emergency of being able to keep their firearms on them and when they're ordered out of their homes not supporting gun owners with being able to take their guns with them without criminal charges being pressed. All right. Hi, Nanette. I am calling in reference to the opposition to SB 296, the mandatory evacuation bill for the Florida House of Representatives. If you could please give me a call back, appreciate it. I want you to be able to give your side of the story as to why y'all are opposing the bill, since I do know that in 2013, the Florida Sheriff's Association um, did a proclamation in support of the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. So I am assuming uh, or giving benefit of the doubt that the reason you are opposing this bill would be for different reasons, obviously not 
for law-abiding citizens to be able to take their guns with them when they're mandatorily being taken out of their homes. Because I understand fully that, um, and, and I'm sure by what you have written and what you supposedly stand for, you would not go along with any sort of Hurricane Katrina type of disarmament allowing law-abiding American citizens to be disarmed and become victims of criminals. So if you could give me a call back, I will make sure that your side is heard as to why you're actually opposing the SB6 carrying a concealed weapon or a concealed firearm providing an exemption from criminal penalties for carrying concealed weapon or concealed firearm while in the act of complying with a mandatory evacuation order. Um, I would greatly appreciate your phone call back. Thank you. All right, Nanette is not available as you could hear. And as soon as she gets back with me, if she gets back with me, I will gladly record that as well and share that with the listeners. However, I do have quite a few questions and wonder if their change on stance is simply because they are receiving grants from the Department of Homeland Security or the U.S. Department of Justice. That's kind of an oxymoron because they're supposed to be standing for the people, but they are also receiving grants from the Department of Justice. So that very well may could also be one of the issues. It states October the 11th, 2013, the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services, COPS, announced, being fun announced funding awards to 263 cities and counties aimed at creating 937 law enforcement positions. More than 125 million will be awarded nationally, including nearly 45 million to fund 356 new school resource officer positions. Six grants totaling nearly $6 million will be awarded to the following Florida Sheriff's Offices. Collar County Sheriff's Office, Hendry County Sheriff's Office, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, Oakland County Sheriff's Office, Pasco County Sheriff's Office, and St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. One does have to wonder if this has to do with funding, claiming their pro Second Amendment. So, um, with that being said, I don't care what you proclaim in your proclamation. When you stand against law-abiding citizens being able to have their guns, their weapons for self-defense, against criminals in one of the most horrific situations that you can be in, which is a mandatory evacuation and normally comes along with massive natural disasters, then you have shown that you do not assist, support, or condone the Constitution. You actually do assist in supporting and condoning unconstitutional infringement upon every person's unalienable rights. That sheet of paper is worth toilet paper if you don't back it up with your actions. And I don't know about my listeners, but I do know about me. We're not going to allow Hurricane Katrina to happen again to our people. I will keep you updated. God bless you. Keep your eyes on this bill. You can go to the Florida House of Representatives site and you can stay up to date on this bill. So keep in contact. Call your legislators. Tell them to support this bill. Support every citizen's right, no matter color, race, creed, doesn't matter. You have a right to defend your life and yourself, your family, and your property. Since when did they become our lords, if you will? Since when did they become our kings? Since when did we, as free people, 
have a dictator to tell us, like a parent, what we can or cannot have to protect our own lives, while they sit there and want to be armed with the same weaponry, the same guns, the same equipment, militarized, paid for by us. They are walking around with weapons that belong to the American people. We gave that to them to be able to defend themselves, yet they would take and confiscate law-abiding American citizens' guns because there's an emergency. But they want to keep theirs, you can believe it. Well, I say this. If you're so for the law-abiding citizens and any citizen being disarmed on a time of emergency, then you yourself should be disarmed. God bless you, and I will keep you updated. Signing off for now.